Good. All right. Thank you for coming out. So I'm Councillor Driscoll. This is a committee meeting for the Transportation Committee. Uh, we're here today to hear from different uh, taxi drivers who have reached out to me from the city, who have reached out to the administration, and uh, it's basically a listening session. We just wanted to hear from you guys and uh, tell us your thoughts on, on uh, what's going on. So, uh, Mr. Zenner, do you want to set it off, or? Jacques not here? Jacques Zenner is not here. I'll okay. Here. Yeah, go ahead. We, we're, we're just here. Oh, there he is. And then we, we can hear from everyone. Um, Okay, a sign in sheet? No, no. It's coming around. Okay, great. My name is John Perigo. I used to have a ground transportation license in the city, but because the city is so messed up with the taxi licensing system and there's only one person that's in charge of it without any arbitration issues that we can present to the city, I've lost my license. Why I've lost my license is because of decisions of your own police department, not because of the law. The city does not follow the law. That's why we're all here. I'd like to know what your interpretation is, or anybody's interpretation, what the difference is between a livery, a taxi, and an Uber and Lyft driver. Any opportunity for you to answer that for me? It's a good question. Because nobody knows it. Nobody knows the answer to that. Anyone here like to respond? I can explain it to you. Anybody here from the Corporation Council? Does anybody here know the laws of the livery? taxi and uber laws of the department of motor vehicles that's why we are all here you people have no jurisdiction in this city whatsoever to even have a taxi licensing system right now because you have no ground transportation board for the last four years you haven't had a ground transportation board yes because i used to be a member of that ground transportation board yes as well as two other people that are in this room so because of that we have a larger issue than what you're seeing with just Uber and Lyft, okay. a much larger. First of all, the city of Syracuse only has a population of 144,000 people, approximately. Mm -hmm. If you were to look at the Department of Motor Vehicle laws regarding taxi and livery laws, uh, there is a 175,000 person population needed to have a medallion system in any city. Now, you are trying to compare to other cities in regards to airports. Buffalo Airport, yes, the airport is inside the city. Rochester, also inside the city. Albany, inside the city. Look at Ithaca, though. I want you to look at Ithaca. Just one example, the closest example that I can give to you. My business is out of clay. So I have a livery tag, and I'll explain to you the difference between livery and taxis in just a minute. I have a livery tag. With that livery tag, that means that I can go to your house, your house, I don't care where you live. It doesn't make a difference. If you called me, I can come, and I can take you, and I can bring you anywhere you want to go. No different than the Ithaca Airport. Ithaca Airport, if you were to call the uh, Mr. Williamson, Sergeant Williamson of the Ithaca, Syracuse, or Ithaca Police Department, which is the person that's in charge of the Ithaca City Police and licensing of the city's licensing department for taxis, he will very clearly tell you that because the Ithaca airport sits seven miles outside the city of Ithaca, it's not a city limit. So they have no jurisdiction over it. Now the airport, now the Syracuse Regional Airport Authority, because it's in conjunction with the city of Syracuse, you guys think that you can give a license to somebody out at the airport. Well, you can't. And the reason for that goes back to that same law. Number one, it's not a municipality, it's an authority. Number two, it doesn't have a population of 175,000 people. So, number one, I'd like to have my license back for this city. I've been trying for four years to go to every one of these offices. Everybody here knows me very well, and today I'm keeping my voice down. I always have, but I was so persistent about my problems that you guys didn't want to hear me, starting with your father that far back. Wow. So we've got somebody from law coming, eighties coming over. My dad hasn't been in City Hall since, what, 91? Sir, I have, uh, are you related to Matt Driscoll? No, I'm not related to Matt Driscoll. It's Matt Driscoll's turn, then. 
Okay, that wasn't me. I'm no relation. That's all right. Um, and to your point, we, we are aware of the, uh, the transportation committee. We are talking about bringing that back and trying to, trying to uh, reestablish that outreach. All right, Mr. Zenner. Thank you. How you doing? Great. Uh, the discussion here today was about uh, taxis versus Uber. Uh, this council allowed Uber to operate in the city of Syracuse about a year ago and did not take the option to not allow Uber to operate. Well, since then, Uber has taken 75% of the taxi market here in Syracuse. Uber doesn't pay the city of Syracuse zero dollars. Now, I just renewed my taxi license, $300 per year, plus $50 for uh, the hack license. So, we have a double standard here. I brought the taxi regulations here, there's 25 pages accumulated since 1977. Uber is self-regulated. Nobody checks on Uber. Uber can do whatever they want. They give them um, a stand at the transportation center ahead of the cabs. They give them a stand at the airport. So what does Uber pay? You think it's fair that I should pay or everybody here that's in the taxi business, $300 per car, plus extensive regulations. Uber allows level one sex offenders to drive. In this city, according to the regulation, you will not be able to drive a, a cab in this city. So, and we have every three years take a physical to be able to drive. Uber does not. Mm. So, you think it's fair? I think it's time to level the playing ground. We should start by reducing the cost to the taxi industry and eliminate some of the burdensome regulations that we have here in this city. And you can u utilize the people in the taxi license section to go after criminals instead of supervising the taxi cabs. And let me tell you, if you read stories about Uber throughout the year, they're horrific. Uber has put a button a panic button in the back of every Uber operator in case something happens. This is how bad it got with Uber. So what we need is for you, who we'll care about the city like I have, I've been over 40 years in the taxi industry, is to level this playing field. So I'm proposing a couple of things. First, to reduce the $300 to down to $25, and for the hack license from 50 to 25, I think that will help our industry greatly. And by eliminating some of the regulations, it'll be a lot easier for us. If not, completely deregulate the taxi industry allow us to operate like Uber, just like any other business. Thank you. Could I, uh, could I follow up, Mr. Zenner, on a couple yeah, of questions? Sure. Um, so not meant in any, uh, just out of my ignorance, what, uh, what prohibits you from becoming and going with Uber or, or Lyft or one of them. I'm, uh, I'm, not, I'm not asking that well, in any sarcastic okay. way. Just, no, no, just no, really trying to see that, what are the advantages, what are the distinctions that you are able to maintain being a taxi driver that make you uh, resistant to joining this Uber right. movement? Uh, 
The only way I've survived for this year is I'm a uh, state provider for Medicaid, number one. And state has regulation for uh, Medicaid providers to be in the city. So that's why the main reason I'm still in the taxi business. Number two, I like the rate. I have an established clientele. Uh, and uh, that's how I feel about staying in the taxi business. <coughs> but in all fairness, either deregulated or deregulate some of the cumbersome uh, uh, laws uh, or ordinances that are for the taxi industry. Beyond beyond the financial ones, what are the what are the regulations that you you uh, are having problems with? Uh, the regulations is uh, once a year they oper they inspect my taxi cab. They even check the air in my tires to make sure they comply. So the wheels turn, you know, the meter clicks, and that's one cumbersome. The other is the constant oversight over the taxi industry. Uh, well, yeah, well, you could say that, but I'm not going to say that, okay? You do, yes. So some of those regulations have to go aside just like uber uber is self-regulated why does uber have to be self-regulated and we cannot be you know the reason i lasted that long in this uh in this business and some of the other companies is because we take pride in our vehicles we want to have good drivers behind the wheels that won't hurt the reputation of the city or people uh, that ride with us. So uh, basically, it's a good system, but it's very cumbersome, and it's not fair nowadays. Okay, uh, Council President Hudson? Yeah, I want to address something you just said. You just said that you want to be able to have good drivers and all that good stuff. Yeah. But I don't know, um, I've called taxi companies on several occasions because I had one of the taxi drivers call me a bitch as he backed over me mm -hmm. and I've had another one that basically traffic violations galore yeah and if I was a police officer I probably would have pulled him over yeah. so we need to talk about how we're doing business yeah. in the city when it comes to the constituents yes so Miss Hudson I I heard you said that a year ago and you have recourse and recourse is either called the taxi company, which is clearly identified on the side of the taxi cab. Uber, you don't know if it's an Uber or not, or. And, and I hear everything yeah. you're saying about yeah. Uber so, and, and taxis, yeah. and I think, you know, we are gonna look at that, but I'm gonna go back to the fact of the people that you employ some of them are not all good people. Exactly. There, 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 is, there, is, there is bad, there is bad and good, okay? That's why we have the regulation and that's why you have a recourse of calling Sergeant Calvin or calling the police and you'll see the number of the operator, taxi license number, so on and so, and say, this guy did this and that to me. But let's revert that situation for a second. Uber did that to you. How oh, you don't know? If he takes off real fast, you won't have time to, to look at his license number, okay? People have been raped and killed in Uber cabs, Miss Hudson. In Syracuse? Uh, uh, all over. Uh, recently, 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 in uh, Uber, Syracuse University co -eds. It was on the news. She was stalked and abused about that and then recently we had one uber driver who was uh, did something in uber cab and he got kicked off and guess what the next day he had the cab license he went to a taxi company to lease a car yeah so 
So it's a question of you using your, your prerogative in calling the police and say you've been assaulted and doing this and that. But that, that's one instant. Could I, one instant. All right, all right. I'd like to hear from uh, yeah. Councilor uh, Bay. You want to say something? Yeah. You know, I think, you know, one thing I heard here, and I'm going to be blunt, that I think was practical right. is the question about fees, right? You know, and obviously the contracting ability lies primarily with, to enter contracts that lies with the administration to be approved or disapproved by this council. Uh, and, and so I don't think it's an impractical discussion to say, you know, can we revisit our fees? They're driving for free. Now, that's not true because they pay the state. Right. And so, you know, the question is, what are your fees in comparison to what they're paying at the state level? Right. So let's be fair about that. Right. Pardon me. You can't just sit, stand up and talk in here. All right. The other thing is this. Um, it's not true that you don't know who's driving a car because their face, their license number and everything shows up on your phone when you order it. So, I, you know, if we could keep the conversation, it, it, it helps us if the conversation stays practical. Yeah. I've used Uber, so I know that their entire all their business shows up on the phone, to be quite frank. And they don't hire sex offenders, man. Uh, yeah. You know, so, it, it, so they're allowed. If, if we could, they're allowed, counsel. I'm just, I'm just putting it out there. It's if allowed. We could keep it on something practical yeah. so that we can make a practical decision, oh. we, we would appreciate it. Yeah. Right? Well, uh, the question here is the level playing field. Uber doesn't pay the city nothing, counselor. Yeah, don't pay you nothing. Don't pay you nothing. I pay the state too. Okay, Uber doesn't pay the city nothing. They have carte blanche to operate here. Okay, and and all deliveries. But you don't know that. That's because you ride with Uber. Okay, now. Okay, it takes too long. If you show up. Now, let me let me be clear with you. Uh, let you, me. You gotta finish. understand that state. Hold up, This is finish. our house. You gotta listen. Listen. Yeah. Okay. Listen. Uh, State law supersedes local law. So no. if the state, what do you mean no? So no. if the state writes legislation for them to operate, we don't supersede state law. Do yes, you, you had that, that option. Do you understand Yes, that? you had that option, uh, well, Councilor. I need, I need you, yeah. I understand you have, see the difference here is we don't have a personal preference. We're, on, we're not in the Uber business nor the cab business. Uh, exactly. We're here to make a fair decision, okay. right? Right, But your Absolutely. conversation equally has to be practical and uh, okay. fair. And, and, right? and, and the so, as I stated, yeah. the, the discussion about costs yeah. is a practical discussion. And regulations? Right? How about the regulations? Well, you talked about registration. Everybody has to get their car registered. I'm talking right? about city, city licensing. Listen, you mentioned registration. You said city they check licensing. the air pressure in your tires, in your tires okay. right? Everybody car gets checked and inspected for yeah. registration. Everybody. You gotta come on. You gotta respect the microphone, okay? Let's let's uh, let, let him talk. It's, it, we're talking about being practical here. You have a council here that's interested in your discussion, uh, you but you also year. have people here that that know that some of the things that have been mentioned are not true. Uh, no. So all we're saying Absolutely is, not. I, I think it's a, I think uh, it's a uh, you're not you, you uh, can't swallow food and up truck at the same okay. time. Uh, you gotta hear me. Uh, when you're done, right? I'll, so I'll the, the whole thing is to say to you, otherwise I'll, I'll speak for me. Yeah, go ahead. Right? I'll speak for me and I'll say it with the cameras rolling. I'm not gonna right. sit here and listen to an argument back and forth. If okay. we're gonna be interested in the right. solution, yeah. then let's find a solution. Okay. All right? right? Because that's I'm gonna speak for me, not anybody else. That's what I'm interested in. All right. There's a solution for right. your industry. Okay. All right? Now, you said that the city laws supersede the uh, the the state laws supersede the city laws. Okay, all right. Now the state a year ago gave you an option to either allow Uber or not to allow Uber uh, to operate here. So what you said, in fact, is not true, Councillor. So no, you took no, 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 no. You took the option to allow Uber to operate. I didn't interrupt you, please. Let's have some respect. Wait for 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Yeah, yes. Well, else speak. Well, well, let me finish, okay? Let me finish, all right? You always do that. Last year when I was here, you did the same thing. No, you did the same thing, okay? You're defending Uber. No, actually, yeah, no, you are. No, you are. Businessman behind you, I happen to like No, I am. I am a businessman. 
Okay, yeah. let's 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 roll it back. Let's roll it back. So, let's keep the conversation. So what I'm saying is, okay, okay I will. All right. Regulations. Yep. City regulation, not state. Yep. Uber does not have any city regulation. Doesn't pay the city zero, and they have car blanche. Nobody checks them out, and they've committed. They Zoop, broke the law me. here, and they allow and they allow sexual one offender to operate here in this city. Please get your facts straight. And what we want is very simple: deregulate the taxi industry to make us even with even the playing field. Well, uh, even playing field. Or let's start the discussion about getting rid of the cumbersome regulation and reduce our fees. And when you charge us, you charge Uber too. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Zenner. Can we hear from the next gentleman? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, for my speaking. name is Frank Manzi with Yellow Taxi in Syracuse. Uh, we, I'm not sure if we're still the largest company in Syracuse as far as taxis. We used to hold 43 tags last year. Uh, I've this year I'm renewing 19 tags. Uh, with Uber and sorry, can you repeat that again? What would it go from? I've reduced from 43 city tags to 19 tags this year. We have no uh, protection. We're spending, you know, three hundred dollars a tag for nothing. They they harass us. They're writing me tickets, and they're not. Yeah, we're paying to be regulated ourselves. We're not paying for like a protection of let's stop these people from. From infracting, like like I was driving around with the sergeant doing a cab inspection, I'm complaining about Ubers with top lights. They have top lights just like a taxi. I have livery vehicles that have top lights. Officer Romaine pulls us over all the time, writes me five tickets, not displaying a ground transportation license, which you're not allowed to do on a livery vehicle. It has to be a taxi. Not displaying a taxi license, which you don't need a taxi license to drive a livery. And then he writes them two parking tickets, obstructing traffic. And usually, a, like a no standing, if he pulls them over near a no standing zone, we beat the tickets. If you go to court, you can beat the tickets. It's just a hassle, which is no big deal. Moving on past that, I wanted to address you with this. Uh, he was discussing the Syracuse University person. There's no communication between the police department and Uber. That man was uh, did whatever to the girl on the university. He was suspended from Uber for a sex charge. Called me up the next day, wanted to come lease his car again he had been leasing up to two weeks before they told me he was going to texas to work to move into texas so he shows up I'm like yeah you can have your car back no big deal about a week and a half two weeks later the police department shows up a couple of detectives from the special victims unit or whatever they call themselves and so he's like they're like who's driving this vehicle i give him the name the detective immediately knew exactly who it was she was like oh this guy Oh, he's a suspended Uber driver. He did this, that, and this. And I'm like, well, nobody told us. Why wasn't the, the sergeant, you're in the same police department, notified of this so at least his license would have been suspended? If there was some sort of regulation that put them Uber drivers with you know, the background checks through the police department, Sergeant Galvin's pretty tight on that. If you have an old drug charge, you were a drug dealer, you were any sort of sex crime, he looks into that and he thinks you're not of... It may not be technically he can hold your license for him, but not upstanding character. He can hold it back for that, and he makes that decision. It doesn't matter if, uh, you know, it may be the, the time limit is over on your felony or your misdemeanor, but he, he goes beyond that and says, no, your character is wrong. You've been charged with this, that, this, and that. I can't give you a cab license. I can't put you near people. And if he had known that that driver had this, he would have pulled his license in a heartbeat. But there was no... There was no communication between our police department and these other, I call them cab drivers. I went to the Uber meeting when they first came to see what it was about. They did it at Dinosaur Barbecue. I could have stood up there and gave that same presentation about my cab company. It was the same thing. We lease vehicles too. If you want to do our work, 20%. I want 20% I'm gonna, I want 20 too. It's not a big deal. That's normal cab operating. You give me 20%, I'll give you work. Just like Uber does. It's a cab company. I'm not going to argue that, though. I understand it's billions of dollars. We can't win that fight. The only thing we can do is try to get the city to help regulate these people, the drivers, something, the top lights. If my livery vehicle is going to get pulled over because it has a top light, if I see a car sitting on Marshall Street with a top light on it, yeah, it's an Uber driver sitting there, but he's just waiting for a ride. If I'm a customer, I don't know. I think it's a taxi. I see a top light. It's purple. It's on. 
can I get a ride? They're not going to tell you no. That's what they're doing. They're not going to tell you. You think they're going to tell you to, oh, punch in the app and I'll take it? No, they're going to give me 10 bucks. We're just going to go. We don't even have to tell Uber. It's a cab. And that's what you're paying for the city tag. You're paying for the right to pick up on the street corner anybody that waves you and then drop off in the city. That's, that's what we're supposed to be paying this $300 for. Delivery vehicles, it's a phone call. If you're going call to call, you only do those jobs. If I get a call at the airport right now, not even starting in the city. I'm just dropping off at the airport with a livery vehicle, totally legal, within the city, within the state. It's legal. Officer Romaine's up there. He writes my driver five tickets for dropping off at the airport because he don't have a cab license. Well, or uh, he's not in a registered taxi, but you don't need that for that type of work. He's not, he's not actually following the laws that are written by the council, the ordinances that are there to be followed. He's... He, he reads them black and white, but there's certain things that he doesn't, he doesn't notice right away, and he, he doesn't care. He lets the judge figure it out. When the, you get in front of the judge, you plead your case. Nine out of ten times, the judge throws it away. You know, I mean, it just takes up your time. It's, it's a hassle for the people that are trying to do the right thing or trying to follow the law. Just like the Uber, most of them, I'm sure 80% of them are trying to follow the law, 80 to 90%, just like you get your bad ones, like she said. But the, when's the last time like a, a taxi driver was suspended for calling a customer a name or something? Like the reports, I've, I haven't ever had the sergeant call, not since Sergeant Long was running it, call me up and be like, you know, your driver is very rude to a customer. He did this, that, and this. You need, to, you need to write an apology letter. You have to have this driver write an apology letter to these people. We just don't have that type of communication as far as getting the drivers in line. If someone has a cab license, we're allowed to hire them, you know what I mean? You can look and until you have that experience like you had where, you know, someone calls you a name or treats you wrongly, it's hard for, as an owner, to pick apart. I tell, whenever I have a complaint, I tell the customers, thank you, if you didn't call me, I wouldn't be able to handle it. Wouldn't be able to straighten these people out. But we don't, a lot of times, we don't know what's going on until we have someone concerned that actually says something to us that, that spreads it around. Okay. Okay, I have, um, I have Councilor a, I have Boyle, a, you like thank to say you, something? Joe. I have a question. Um, so, back to your communication with the police department issue. Um, were you suggesting that the police department should do the background checks for you? I wholeheartedly believe they should. So do the you background. don't do background checks on your drivers? No. The police department do background checks on all your the drivers. The police, the, and anybody that has a cab cab license, they run a, a full. And Sergeant Galvin's pretty tight on who he wants to drive and who do these want. Maybe their appearance is wrong. Maybe they're a little gruff. Those aren't things that will stop you from getting a cab license. But the Uber drivers don't. They're getting registered. They're getting looked through by somebody. We don't even know where they live. Right. I was just or what their So when you offered that tag are. back to that driver, you didn't have any... He had um, a cab license. I had no warning. But he warning. didn't have... He, there was no... I had he, no he warning. He obviously had a record at that point. But no, it was... Uh, it was just, uh, I don't know if he had been charged yet. I didn't even know until that uh, the woman detective came down and told me. And she knew exactly who it was. As soon as I was like, oh, who's got this vehicle? Looked up the plate number for it, looked up. Right, I but said, that's not your responsibility to look into who these drivers are? When they have that cab license, it lets me know that the sergeant from the police department has, says they're okay. And that's supposed they, to give me the confidence. Even if they leave and come back? He, he they, didn't. They don't uh, have to re No, they, it's up good for a year. Anything? The sergeant, if he has too many complaints, they can pull it at any time and go through a uh, go through a little. I don't know if it's a court battle or administrative judge. They can go through. There's a process to go to get it back and to to get reinstated. But I, I never hear of them pulling pulling these licenses for very. You know, I've heard of maybe one in the last five six years. You know what I mean? So Besides in addition John, to the three hundred, in problems. addition to the background checks, what other do you receive any other benefits for the three hundred dollars fees per car? Uh, benefits I can if someone. I just no, I don't my, mean that sarcastically. My, my I just, company, it's a real question. <laughs> my company, we don't sit at the taxi stands. It gives you the right to sit in a taxi stand, sit at the bus station. Uh, now, recently, you can sit at the airport until they get this new tag system set up. They took out the ordinance for the special company or whatever they had in there. They went around that. It's been a free for all out there. So now I've never gotten ticketed out there before for dropping off. Now since they opened it up, I get ticketed every time I send somebody out there. It's crazy. It's like a, 
it's almost like, and I hate to say this to all the independents here, it's almost like they went from liking companies and trying to get the people out to let's cater to the independents. If you're not an independent operator, we don't want you at the airport. We don't want you doing business here. The bus station's the same way. I pull in the bus station. All the everything's got to be dotted and crossed because I know that's where the police are going to sit and harass usually the company drivers that pull in so there. So if if we were to find like uh, Councillor Bay had suggested, I think we all feel like something needs to be fixed here um, and we'd like to do better business. Um, but would your company be able to take on the background checks and all of those things? And no, 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 no. I no, mean, no, that, that's be, a, uh, if it were that's a police issue, really. I, I don't think that we want to take that I, away I from agree the police with this, department, this council, nor, yeah. nor than, than Jack. I think that one of the important things for the cab is to have the inspections, because then you know when you're getting in there, it's a safe, you know, that, that the tires right. aren't bald, that, uh, you know, the, the uh, well, and, and everything else, that it's clean and it's maintained and that you're inspected and everybody No, else. I don't mean that they should uh, not of, have the our inspections. Hurdles. I mean that it would be... The, Another one of our hurdles we would that no we're, longer have that as a service with provided is, uh, for by the They've city. slashed our prices. They're, they're offering these people, it. and and I hate to say it, like, there it doesn't benefit the lower-income families that don't have credit cards. They, they can't call Uber. They, that's why that's where my business is now. I do a lot of Medicaid work and I keep my customer base because most of the people that I service through Medicaid don't have credit cards. They can't call and do their credit card. They're cash paying customers and they can't use Uber anyways. So it's like, a, Thank they're you. not including everybody. That's a fair point. Before, before we, sorry, what were you saying, sir? Oh, also with the, uh, it just took me four, weeks to get a cab inspected i can put a livery on the same day i had a car get smashed i'm just trying to switch taxis i had one sitting there we got the insurance switched the plate switched it took me nearly a month to get it inspected as a legal taxi in syracuse where i could put a livery on the same day keep my guy working you know it's six hundred dollars a day in a cab that you can make day and night shift i you know we work them 24 hours a day so throw three weeks, four weeks on that. It, it turns out to be a lot of money. So things are moving a little bit faster. We get everybody under the same the same uh, regulations. It would make everybody, I think, a lot happier. Okay. Uh, sir, before... Explain the taxi delivery a lot. Before, before we go to that, I just want to make sure everybody who came out gets a chance before we, before we go into to, to second rounds. Did anybody, any of the other drivers, like a chance to speak before we go into second rounds? Sorry, I didn't mean to... Uh, be private. I just want to make sure everyone gets a chance to speak before we run out of time. How you doing? My name is Chris McCarthy, and I'm an independent driver. And uh, the comparison between Uber and Lyft and us, they're doing the same work as us, but they don't have to have the assurance as us. They don't have to have a hack license in the car like we do. If you make it so they have to at least have a hack license in the car and for higher insurance, that way that everybody's covered. And when a customer gets in the car, they guarantee they're covered if they have the for higher insurance. And, that, and uh, another thing is, Two, a lot of the Uber drivers are having credit card stickers on their window and top lights, like he said. So they're acting just like a taxi. So why don't they be treated like a taxi? Please educate me. What's a hack license? A hack license is a license we have to keep in a car. That means we've been background checked, and the sergeant approved us, and we have to keep that in a car with a photo ID, and it has our number on it. That's a hack license. And it, on the dashboard at all times, so everybody knows who you are. Uber and Lyft should have the same exact treatment as us. They're doing the same exact work as us. They're not a, they're not a rideshare company. They are a taxi company. A rideshare is you leave your house, go to work, you pick somebody in between, they give you a few dollars for gas. That's a rideshare. They're actually a taxi company getting away with not even just having regular license plates on their car. They should have at least livery plates on their car. I appreciate it, Chris. Thank you. We're and I have pictures of uh, logos of uh, credit cards on their windows. So they're doing work outside of Uber and Lyft. So if you made sure they had at least livery insurance, they could at least, then th that's okay then. They can pick up and do whatever they want to do. But they're not, do they're not following the rules and laws, and something has to be done. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Ramona Bellavia. I'm representing Bellavia Transportation. We also, like City and Yellow, have lowered our city hacks and our city tag intake. Because yes, we're paying the $300 a year for the right to go to different places to do pickups, to park and get people. 
Well, the last time I worked, I tried to go into the taxi stand. I couldn't. It was full of Uber and Lyft. And of course, me, Mouth Almighty, got out and asked him, why are you here? And I was told, because we want to be. By the time I went and I got an officer, and I explained to them, they cannot be in our cab stand. The officer said, oh well. Later that night, one of my cars got ticketed for obstruction of the corner. His tail end was out probably a foot from the corner, dropping people off. We weren't even picking up. We were dropping people off a matter of 30 seconds. Cop said, here's your ticket. I really feel we're being harassed and that the city of Syracuse is pro-Uber. And we're getting nothing out of it, out of our $300 that we're paying. Our taxi drivers are paying to be regulated taxi drivers. They cannot even make any money on a pickup because Uber is sitting where we're supposed to be. I know that it's difficult to regulate the Uber. I know it's difficult to ask the City of Syracuse Police Department to take it on a little bit further and shoo them along. Treat them like you would a taxi. Please, treat them like you would a taxi. Get them out of where they're not supposed to be. Mm. Because if I put one of my livery cars in a cab stand, we'd get a ticket. But an Uber car could go. Not fair to us. And to get back to the registration and inspection part, I'm sorry, I don't remember who said it, all cars need to be inspected. It is not a matter of New York State inspection. It's the city of Syracuse inspection. They're inspecting our meters. They're inspecting our tires. They're inspecting what the car looks like. They're looking at the maintenance records. They look at everything, not just what New York State does. Yes, above and beyond a, a great deal, to the point where they're going to tell people, nope, I'm sorry, you're not getting your ground transportation license back because your meter just clicked 10 cents under. Not even over, under. So the regulation for the cabs is very strict. That was, I just wanted to explain the registration and inspection to you. Thank you for listening to me. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Uh, does anybody else want to speak? Else, you wanted to tell us just the distinctions between the three. Is that correct, yes. sir? Yep, pretty much. The distinction is when you go to the Department of Motor Vehicles, there's a form that you have to fill out for your, for your registration. It says, are you in a jurisdiction of the city of New York, which we are not? Are we in the jurisdiction of the city of Syracuse, which handles a medallion system? Yes, that would be the taxi, to get a taxi license that way. Are you a jurisdiction outside the city of Syracuse, which would then give you a livery plate? What happens is the livery, which I'm a livery because I'm, my company is out in clay, okay? I very legally can come into this city by phone call, pick up somebody, drop them off. I can even go back and get them and pick them up and drop them off. I don't need a medallion for that. It took me a long time to teach a city that. <laughs> what we have a problem with is that the city of Syracuse Police Department has never been educated. They have no idea. If you, I just asked you guys one simple question when I first came up here. What's the difference between a taxi and a livery? Nobody knew. The same exact thing that happens with the Syracuse Police Department is nobody knows. Now, me, you guys are all bringing up licensing for the cabs. Yep, they all got to have licensing. They all got to have background checks. They all got to have everything. Me, because I'm throw it out of the city, I went the other route. I went ahead and I went to a livery. Well now, all I gotta do, we have the same insurance by the way. For hire insurance is called FH1 insurance. Doesn't make a difference if it's a livery plate or a taxi plate, you have to have for hire insurance. Uber does not have to have for hire insurance. As a matter of fact, in New York State, you're only allowed one kind of insurance. When every one of you go to the DMV, you hand in your registration form, you hand in your insurance form and you give them your driver's license so they know who you are, all right? One kind of insurance. If you go to the New York State Department of Motor Vehicles and you ask them why is it that Uber's allowed to have two, they'll tell you, actually Susie in North Syracuse, the head person at DMB, little blonde haired lady, all right? <laughs> Just to describe her. 
I don't even know her last name because she won't give it to us. But just to go there and ask her that question, she'll very clearly tell you that the DMV is in charge of Uber. But if you go there to complain, you can't complain to anybody. If you come to me as a livery driver, I can take anything outside the city and I can come into the city. As a taxi driver, you can start in the city or start outside of the city, but the only difference is, is that taxi medallion means that they can sit in a taxi stand. No different, okay? I don't know how to, in your, in your own- And it means they can have a light on top, right? Like solicitor. It doesn't make a difference. I can have a light on top. Matter of fact, sir, matter of fact, that. sir, in Supreme Court, I won that because my company is outside the city, Sergeant Galvin gave me several tickets for this, that I can have a livery plate and put a taxi light up on top because my company is outside the city. No different than a policeman coming in that's unmarked. If they were unmarked, if I didn't have that taxi light up on top, nobody would know who I was. If I pulled into your driveway and, and you called the car, if I didn't tell you what kind of car that was, you'd never know what kind of car it is if it didn't have that light up on top. So Uber has no regulation whatsoever. They have two insurances instead of one. It's all the way around illegal. And on top of that, you guys as, as regulators are allowing them to do the same exact job as what we are, but regulating us and not regulating them. And as a matter of fact, Uber's allowed to vary the rates whenever it gets busy. Taxi cabs can't. Yeah. Me, I don't have to have a background check as a livery. Don't have to have one at all. But DMV, that's because nobody checks it, all right? But DMV law very clearly says that I have to have a, a background check. And it doesn't say a state background check, it says a federal background check. Because what happens with Uber is Uber can come in, matter of fact, I wanna tell you all, I worked for Uber for two weeks just to check them out, okay? Just so I got all three in there, all right? Uber took them two minutes for me to get verified, maybe three. Now, if you can do a background check, even through a police department in two or three minutes, you're doing great. But Uber only checks in the state that you reside in right now, mm. not in the national background check. Right. Nor all these foreigners that are coming in from other places, do they go to their countries to find out their backgrounds either. Yep. Thank you, sir. Yeah, uh, Councilor, um, Council President Hudson. Somebody made a statement. I heard somebody say that we have 144,000 people. It may have been you, one of you. And you said that the city of Syracuse, we're not, we can't legally do it because we don't have 175,000. I'm actually here to ask you guys to abolish. But then you turned around and said, you want us to give you back your license. So because if we can't do it, how do we give you exactly, back your license? Exactly, that was my question exactly. How can you do it? Because, oops, sorry. If you don't have that 144,000, I'm here right now, and I'm gonna be real honest with you, I don't care who hears it, you're illegal. I want you to abolish the licensing system because that would solve all your problems. Even if it goes to $25 a piece, it doesn't really make a difference. All right, because me, I, I can drive down the road here in Syracuse with my taxi light on, okay? And if I see somebody doing that, legally I can't pull them over, all right? But a lot of guys that want that money in their pocket are gonna pull them over, are gonna pull over, they're gonna grab them, they're gonna go. You have no regulations that you can do legally. You have none. You have not got the amount of people. And in your own common council uh, rules of the, of the taxis, page one, it says very clearly that you can't even regulate it yourselves because of the laws. I guess it's not true because Officer right, Dassin has issued numerous tickets. Hi, Sir? I'm Frank Manz, yeah. Just a quick story, I had a gentleman stop down probably two weeks ago, all excited he got approved for a taxi license in the city. And I looked on his car, he's got an Uber sticker and a Lyft sticker. I go, why are you applying for a taxi license? He goes, well, I've always wanted, I've been on the list two years waiting to get it, I can finally get it. I gave him a taxi meter and I said, what do you have for insurance? He says, I'm using the same insurance I have with Uber. I go, well, you can't. And we went back, he stopped back a couple days later, he wanted um, a top light, give him a top light. Would you find out about the insurance? Well, long story short, he come back, he said, oh my God, they want $5,000 for taxi insurance. I'm going back to Uber and Lyft. You know, that's fair. So what I'm trying to say is, 
what we're asking for is why does Uber have to be ahead of the taxis? Why can't we be on even? Why can't the city look out for somebody they're regulating? Look out for us. Come on, you won't have any taxis. I, uh, yeah, we're, I kind of want to start. Did anybody else want to? Anybody who hasn't spoken yet? You can pass it around. Start with Council Rudd. I, I, I would like to note that uh, I, I probably should have started the meeting with this, but that there are a lot of um, a lot of state restrictions that once we put in, you know, once the city approved Uber, that the state regulates, and there's very little that we can do to uh, actually regulate them. The, the, the where where the to Councilor Bay's point, where where the compromise might be is in what we can what we can do with you guys with the city with the city's efforts you know what i mean as there there is a, just to clarify so what i'm curious about when you said the five thousand dollars insurance now is that state or federal i mean what that's new that, york state insurance for right that's new york state so just, that's just to be able to operate as you know that's that's something that i don't believe we would have any any what, I, input what i'm trying in, to say you know? is what yeah I'm so i was i'm just the regulation right right you know it's like it's not a state it's a state law okay uber can come to syracuse but the state law didn't say be first in line at the airport, be first in line at the Greyhound station, be right. first in line to taxi stand, be able to sit where you, where you want. This is what we're asking for the city to do. It's your city. Right. We're asking, you know, help us out a little bit here. You or you won't have any taxis. That was an Uber or a, or a Lyft? You got to use the microphone. We need we need the microphone if you're going to speak. Sorry. That's, that's picture number one, all okay. right? The one that I'm showing you right there. It's what it says on the side of the car. I see this gentleman every day just about doing Medicaid transportation, all right? Every day. Now, that vehicle on the side says it's got a Department of Transportation number. It's got uh, their telephone numbers. You name it. It's got it all on there, including an LLC. Okay. Yeah. Now I want to show you the second. Yeah, go ahead. Just uh, a side note: when Uber and Lyft started, uh, we were told as taxi companies we were not allowed to sign up for Uber and Lyft with a vehicle that is registered as a taxi in Syracuse. Uh, that Sergeant Galvin that told me that personally. Too much insurance. I'm not sure that that's a law or a real rule. Okay. But most of these independents. Uh, could sign up for Uber and Lyft if they really wanted to and should be able to use the same vehicle that they're doing their taxi work with to do Uber and Lyft. I don't see why not, but they, they have the rate problem? difference. I think that that's the issue. Here, or is that the, the well, we were, told, we were told when they came to Syracuse that uh, Sergeant Galvin said, told me personally that if anybody signs up for Uber and Lyft with one of the taxi vehicles, that he was gonna remove their ground transportation license the tag that allows them to be a taxi in Syracuse. Just a side note of you know, just things that hurt the taxi independence. Yep. Sir, we yeah, keep it keep it brief, but yeah, two pictures finish that I just up, showed you. Finish up that thought. I'd like to I'd like to ask Mr. Zenner a few questions before we wrap up. I, I try to keep we try to keep these to around an hour, so I don't Thank want to keep you. it going uh, for, for more than an hour. But. Just a note when the state approved Uber, yes. they gave each municipality an option whether to allow Uber to operate in their municipalities or not. So the city of Syracuse said, we're not gonna do that, okay? But you created a problem because you have a double standard now. Uber operates, don't give you nothing. You don't regulate Uber. Uber doesn't answer to anybody but Uber. And here we are, okay? Our insurance cost is more, our overhead is more, and what do we get for paying you three hundred dollars for the tag and plus the background check, which is an individual license, another fifty dollars, three hundred and fifty dollars? Uber don't give you nothing. They're operating in your streets and uh, and hauling people, and you don't know who you're riding with. So that's the problem that you created when you allowed Uber to operate in the city of Syracuse. You created double standards. Okay, which it's very cumbersome, okay? And throughout this year, uh, I had a lot of comments from people that say, I will never ride with Uber. I don't know who I'm riding with, okay? When I see a taxi, I know this taxi has been uh, background checked. 
the tax, the car is safe. Who checks Uber's car? We do, do a, two inspections. We do the state inspection that Councillor Bay was referring to. Mm -hmm. Well, you can't get that to get on the road. But then we go through another inspection. They even check, like I said, the air in your tires. Who, who checks Uber's air in their tire once a year? Yeah. Who, who stops Uber and say, because they don't know what Uber looks like. Uber has a sticker on the car. Taxi cab has a taxi light. And now they want to be like us. So, so anyways. One, uh, uh, the, the, the final questions I want to ask you were regarding, you said that, that you guys have, you have a medical program, you have Medicare or? Uh, Medicaid is, is licensed through the state. I'm a, like many others here, are Medicaid providers. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a license with the state to transport Medicaid patients from their home to their doctors to their therapies and that's what's really keeping us going keeping it uh, because standard. Uber has taken 75% of the market already but not the Medicaid market and maybe who knows maybe that's gonna happen too so 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 to be fair like I, I proposed let's reduce our uh, fees uh, let's reduce our regulations because any fair-minded people sitting here at this table who are in business know what regulations do to their overhead and their cost. Okay. So let's, let's work on that. Councillor Rudd, did you the, want to say anything? Big, yes. Biggest picture level, my takeaway is that there's like an equity issue in terms of how Uber and taxi and livery drivers are treated. And you could either lower the burden on the taxi and livery drivers or you could I suppose equally regulate the uber drivers to make it well more well equitable I, uh, is there is in theory but I think the state prohibits that that so that was the that state was the makes point. it hard for us to be equal we can, we can impossible ask, yeah ask. but we've also we could ask the state like we've sent around articles yeah. okay. we can ask the state well and affects us on Medicaid as well yeah Okay. So is it like just lowering the fee from 325 and from 40 to 25 and like having an education outreach for police officers to understand the difference in 25 and 25 regulating certain spaces yeah. so that they're actually clear yeah, for I, the cab drivers and not occupied by yeah. is uh, that like equity or is it like the finances are so we've also kind of at least I've mentioned my counselor Green you know, over there, like talking about in Portland and other cities, they tax every Uber ride. Like the city of Portland will have a 75 cent yeah. charge on every yeah. ride sharing. Every, every city. Yeah, do that here, okay. Uber has yeah, no. yeah, yeah. All right, before, before we wrap up, I saw the officers in the back. Did you want to say anything? No? No? Okay. Uh, so, okay. So basically, Dennis. that's, right. that's right. what we're asking the city. Right. Um, I'm available to talk about what regulations we want eliminated and, and uh, make it a level playing field so you can have it. Uh, every municipality has a demographic, okay, difference from another one. Uh, in a lot of cities in, uh, in, uh, in, the, uh, in the states, uh, Uber pulled out because they wanted them to pay and use the same regulation as the taxis. Uh, in Montreal, Canada, Uber doesn't operate there anymore. They kick them out, okay? okay. So if you look up Uber, Google Uber, and you see what happens. You see horror stories on them, Uber and Lyft, because the taxi industry has been built over years, 60 years of rules and regulations that we, we discussed and implemented and made it safe for your community. Every community is different. So let's work on that. All right, gentlemen, I wanna thank you all for your time, uh, you. for coming out here. Thank you very much. Uh, we've listened to you and we will respond. If you've left your emails, I will try to reach out to all of you and you can reach out to me. Uh, thank you for coming, thank you for sharing your thoughts and we'll get back to you as soon as we can.